Welcome, my name is Melinda Hart. You are watching Stamping with Hart. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And today we're gonna be working with the Robot Buddies card kit. Um, April is Autism Awareness Month. Some people call it Autism Acceptance Month. My son is autistic, so throughout the month of April, I am trying to, um, you know, bring attention to some products and to some projects that you could do with your loved ones um, or with kids um, who might enjoy these projects. So uh, be sure to say hi, whether you're watching live or in the replay, uh, you'll be able to find more information about this and other things that will be coming out from me on my blog, which is at stampingwithheart.blogspot.com. We are gonna be looking at the original cards from this kit, and we're also gonna be looking at some alternatives today. So Robot Buddies um, is a card kit from what Stampin' Up! calls their kits collection. And Robot Buddies was specifically designed for kids. Now, of course, we can, you know, make these cards and we can send them to whoever we want. Um, but I wanted to specifically check out this kit, um, put it together myself and see how I felt about it. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to be doing this video today and I'm actually going to be doing um, a special video. I'm going to be filming it this week and I'll, I'll follow up with you guys about it. Also about this kit, but more specifically, um, with special needs. So I'll, I'll, got, I'll let you guys know a little bit more about that once it's ready. I'm not quite there yet, but for today, we're going to be getting some ideas as to how to use this kit. So, uh, Stampin' Up! If you go to their website has a kits collection. You can choose from a whole variety of kits and this one is in it. Um, I was very interested in the fact that they wanted this to be for kids and that it should be easy for kids to assemble. And these were the cards that the team designed. And you guys know how much I love Paper Pumpkin, right? So this is right in line with that. If you like kits, you're gonna love this one. It was very easy to make these three cards. So <clears throat> let me, before we get into this, I'm gonna walk you through the alternatives too. Um, so here, let's take a look at some of the alternative ideas. So these are the mini paper pumpkin boxes, okay? And I use the kit, which I'll show you. Um, I use the kit to decorate both of these boxes, okay? And then on the inside, I did an alternate card. And then here's the original size versus the alternate kit card size. So this is more of the thank you card size here. This is our standard card size. And then you could do a cute little gift for somebody with robot buddies. Now, paper pumpkin, um, the mini paper pumpkin boxes are retiring. So I wanted to mention that if you wanna get those. Um, the other thing that I put together was a little matching game. <clears throat> so let me just put this aside. I thought this was so cute. Um, my mom actually got that for Connor. So here you can see we have, and these have been laminated, but it's a little matching game where you can match the robot and you can match the color. Um, some people, you know, can call this a memory game. You can make these as um, simple or as complicated as you like. I really wanted to keep it on the simpler side. Okay, so really, really cute, easy to make these. And then in this box, I have the bigger ones. So there's two different size um, robots. And you can see just depending on the size that you want, look at how cute those are. <clears throat> I really enjoyed playing with this kit. It's really cute. Um, I'll get into the colors in just a moment. Okay, so that's the idea. And of course, if you had a birthday gift or you wanted to put together a little craft kit for the kids, um, one of the great things about this kit is that it comes with, and we'll go through what um, comes with it, but it comes with two ink spots, pumpkin pie and Bermuda Bay. 
So you could either put them both in a little box, right? And both in your little craft box, if you're making a little craft box for somebody, um, or you can split them up. <clears throat> okay, I promised you I wouldn't clear my throat too much. So I'm really gonna try to, really gonna try to stick with that. All right, so I'm just gonna set these aside. So let's go through the contents of the kit first, um, and then we'll jump into some projects. Um, the kit, the card from the kit that I'm actually going to make with you is this one, and I'll tell you why. Um, I loved, loved, loved the concept of that card. So you're going to get your instructions here, which we'll go over in just a moment. You're going to get the two ink spots. You're going to get a block in this card kit, which is so wonderful. I love when they include the block. Okay, that truly makes it all inclusive. And then we have the stamp set. So you can see we have the two robots. We have a little bow here. Um, we have the gears in different sizes. We have happy birthday, let's be friends. Of course, when it's a card kit for kids, I love when the font is very easy to read, um, all capital letters, which is really nice. And then we also get stickers. So you get two sheets of the stickers. You get two sheets of these super cute bubble. Um, what do we call for the sentiments? Um, the die cuts. And it's in three of the colors. So we have Knight of Navy, Bermuda Bay and Pumpkin Pie here. And you can see I already got into this one. You get a full sheet of the Stampin' Dimensionals. You're going to get some layering pieces here, and I've already used some, but you're going to get some layering pieces here in white. And then we have our card bases, and there are three different card base patterns here. So you have the, um, the scene with the grass and the um, clouds, and then you have the one that has the gears. This is in Bermuda Bay, or not, I'm sorry, this is in Balmy Blue. <coughs> And this is in Bermuda Bay. And this one has just a really simple line design. Reminds me of like a pinstripe suit almost. Okay, so um, you get nine cards in this kit. I have obviously already dug into mine. And you get really cute envelopes. So here's what the envelopes look like right here. So, so cute. Love the gears on the inside. All of the envelopes are the same in this kit. All right, and <clears throat> we're just gonna kind of go ahead and jump right in. Um, I'm gonna be doing an in color club this year. I'll be talking about you know all of that a little bit more towards the end uh, for anybody who wants to hang out. But for now, let's go ahead and we'll stick with our um, our robot buddies kit and let's make this card first. So this is one of the cards that they designed for us in the instructions. And I am just looking for my instructions while I'm talking to you. So for alternates, um, it's just like Paper Pumpkin in that it'll tell you what your inventory is. Make sure you get everything in your kit. Um, the coordinating colors, that's always a big deal for me. That's what I use to make my little, um, uh, the matching cards. So Balmy Blue, Bermuda Bay, Granny Apple Green, Knight of Navy, and Pumpkin Pie. I love that color combo actually. Okay, so if you've never gotten a kit from us before, if you're brand new to the kits, if you open this up, it has visual instructions. This is great pretty much all around, um, but I love that you can just kind of walk through and see what you're gonna do and how you're gonna put your cards together. So card one is actually the card that we're gonna make together. And I'll tell you why I wanted to do this one. So I absolutely love that this card uses stickers. The only stamp that we're gonna be doing is Let's Be Friends. And then I'll save the stamping for our alternate, okay? <clears throat> oh, I forgot to tell you guys about the googly eyes. That's the funnest part. So it also comes with a pack of googly eyes in multiple shades. How cute is that? And you can see we have the googly eyes on our card here. This is our alternate. And they shake a little, not too much, but so, so cute. Okay, so we're gonna need our stickers, our card base. So 
So we're going to do the card base with the gears. We're going to do one of our basic white layering pieces. And I am going to use my bone folder here just to get a nice crisp edge. Um, we're going to be putting together some little characters here. And you could choose whichever characters that you would want. Okay, so we're going to do these two pieces for the one. And then we're going to make this one, which is these these two pieces here. But of course, you could do this one. I think that would be cute, um, wh whichever you would want. OK, so nice and simple and easy. So uh, a tip that I like to share for kids is I've actually pulled up the majority of this sheet. So whenever you get a sticker sheet like this in the mail, it's completely flush, like it's completely flat and smooth. So it can be hard for, you know, a small child to kind of pull these out. Um, now, if they have a really good, you know, grasp, they can do um, the pincher and all of that. That's great. But if you're dealing, um, you know, with a, a child on the spectrum or maybe somebody who has special needs, if they um, have difficulty with the pincher grasp or if they need help with that, then it could be more beneficial to make it easier for them to get um, the sticker. So what I will usually do is I will pull up the outer piece. And so what that does is it makes it easier for them to be able to grab. They can immediately kind of grab onto that without having to contend with this. Okay. So <clears throat> I'll be talking a little bit more about that on our next video, but I've already removed the, the big panel from this one so that it's easy, really easy to get a grasp on these and pull these up. So let's start with that. All right, so we're just gonna put our little robot together and I'm just gonna put that head down right there. Get this little body. This is gonna be one of the easiest cards that you will make with or for whoever this is for, okay? Let's do, we'll do the bigger body since I did the little blue one here. All right. And so do the little, the little body just like that. <clears throat> and that's it. Okay. So I love the clean white space that we have here. It's not too busy, um, which is really great when you want to keep something really basic and really simple, especially for kids. You don't want to overwhelm them or give them too many choices sometimes, um, you know, and this is a great way that the uh, the Stampin' Up, you know, designers uh, made this possible for the kids. So I wanted to point out this card specifically because I thought it was so sweet that this was so easy to do. And now we're just going to stamp our Let's Be Friends. I'm going to use my full size ink pad, but of course you could use your ink spot. I'm going to save my ink spots for the kids. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get the Let's Be Friends stamp. I'm just going to stamp that down. Okay. All right, this is going to get popped up on a dimensional. You can actually put this whole sheet up, pop this up on a dimensional. That's what I did with the original card. But on this one, I'm just gonna leave it flat, which will make it nice and easy to mail if you are planning to mail these. But I think it's so important to show that we really do need these cards to be nice and easy, especially for a kid who's brand new to this or um, you know who likes something that's a little bit more on the simpler side. Okay, and then let me go ahead and grab my dimensionals. Let's see where I put those. Here they are. Always hiding them from myself. Okay. Oops. Okay. There we go. And it's as easy as that. All right. So that's the first card. Uh, we're not going to do the other two cards from the kit. We're going to move to the alternate now, just because um, these cards are very easy 
to put together and the instructions are really easy to follow. Um, I just wanna give you a few alternate ideas now. Uh, let's work with the paper pumpkin box first. So I'm trying to use up my paper pumpkin boxes because I know they are on their way out and I will miss them, I love them. Um, you would get 10 to a pack and they are food safe. Okay, I'm gonna go with a simpler pattern for this one which will be working with the gears. And we're gonna stick with those colors from the kit um, for our paper pumpkin kit. Now we're working with a photopolymer stamp set. So if you do wanna you know, put a little extra cushion down for your box, you can do that. This is gonna be the top of our box. This is the bottom, okay? And I will walk you through um, the areas that I will be stamping and why um, for our paper pumpkin box. But I'm gonna be using Bermuda Bay and I'm gonna be using pumpkin pie. And I'm gonna open these both up. I'm gonna stick with my large ink pads tonight. Okay. And then we're gonna be working with this single large gear here. And we're gonna be working with this trio of gears and they're all different sizes as well. So basically what I was doing, and let me start with pumpkin pie first. So I was trying to go in all of my corners with this one. So just kind of getting on those edges here. And then <clears throat> basically building out a frame. So once you start getting those pieces in place, and you don't have to be so structured with it, right? You can just have fun and kind of stamp all over. Um, but we're gonna start here. I'm gonna do this in sections, okay? So basically what we wanna do is we wanna stamp the areas of the box that people are going to see. Um, I don't wanna stamp every inch of the box. I just wanna stamp enough so that we have some, you know, some fun decoration going on here. and you can stamp you know, as much or as little as you want. Now we can create just this border because we're gonna have a layering piece on here, right? So you don't have to stamp all over unless you would want to. Totally up to you. I'm just gonna leave it. Um, and then we're gonna wanna do this piece so we don't need to worry about any of our little flaps, but we wanna stamp here, here, now this is the actual bottom of the box, so we don't have to worry about that. But we wanna stamp here, so we got these three strips we're gonna stamp. And then we wanna stamp these two pieces here, which are gonna become the sides of our box. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, all right, and so now I'm gonna warm up our score lines here for the box. We're just gonna start folding everything in. With these panels, we're gonna poke these little pieces out. If you're somebody who loves making little educational um, you know, uh, DIY, you know, crafts or things like that, little projects, these boxes are so perfect. Okay. This will fit a box of flashcards, it will fit crayons, it will fit um, a whole bunch of different, different things. Okay, so then you just tuck in your little sides here, so your little flaps, and then you 
push and lock these in. So you can see here, I'm just trying to get this little flap to meet with that groove that we just punched out. And once they are in the grooves, you're all set with your box. Okay, and that's just for anybody maybe who hasn't worked with the paper pumpkin yet. All right, so for our next piece, and you can close up your paper pumpkin box by sliding that in. Okay, and there you go. So that's the outside of the box. And then we're gonna wanna decorate our box. So I'm gonna bring back in the original. All right, and then here is my leftover piece. And instead of die cutting, this time I'm just gonna trim off that edge and use this layer. We'll just make it simple. Um, but if you wanna use uh, your die cuts, you can. I use stitched re rectangles on these two. So let me just see if I can get this in here. And then I'm just gonna trim this off. I'm literally gonna just trim the edge and put this over here. That was my leftover piece. So this was a card base from the kit. So this is measuring four and a quarter by um, two and a half. Okay, so there we go. I think that that fits just perfectly, right? And then we're also gonna wanna get another um, rectangle for our, uh, our little robot here. Okay, so the piece that we're working, now, uh, working with now is two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And we're gonna stamp our robot. We're gonna stamp him in pumpkin pie. Um, I'm gonna focus on our bigger robot and the one with the rounded head. Okay. So we're just gonna put that down. And then let's get this one. Gotta use those googly eyes because they're too cute. Okay. All right, so here is our robot buddy. And we're gonna go back to our stickers now. And there are some fun ways that you can dress up your, um, your robot if you want to. So here, we're gonna use this little trio of hearts, this little rectangle. Okay, just put it right here. We have our little googly eyes. And I haven't used any in the balmy blue yet. So why don't we give them some balmy blue eyes? We'll use the small ones. They fit inside these little squares pretty nicely for the eyes on the bigger robot. Okay, right, isn't that so cute? Okay, so we have this. Now let's go ahead and start putting our little box together and we'll pop on a few more stickers onto our box. And of course, if you have the kids helping you um, or the grandkids helping you with this one, then you can let them pick whatever they would want to decorate their box with. They might wanna decorate the box with stickers and not even stamp on it. So definitely um, up to you, just depending on if you guys are making these together or if you're making them as gifts. All right, so there's the first piece. We're gonna put our second piece right over top of it. I'm gonna leave everything flat. <clears throat> you can use your dimensionals. You get plenty in your kit if you wanna use those. All right, and then we're gonna come back here and they have like these gears. Um, there's a few different things that you can use, but I thought the gears were so cute. And then how about the flowers with the gears? That's also adorable. So I'm just gonna pop on a couple of the gears. Let's do the balmy blue one. Okay, and then for the last piece, we would want a sentiment of some kind. So this one says, let's be friends. For this one, we could do happy birthday if we would want, um, or we can stick with the let's be friends. I love the idea of a friendship kit, I really do. Um, I think that that is so sweet. And it's not something that you see every day, right? So let's do happy birthday just to change it up. And we'll stamp in our pumpkin pie. 
here's my sentiment this is a really nice stamp this happy birthday you could use this over and over and over again so we're just going to stamp that down i wiggled a little and now i want to do it over again no wiggling better all right and so here we would do our happy birthday i'm just going to use my I'm using Stampin' and Seal Plus, by the way, and that's just because it's next to me. But your glue um, or your dimensionals would be just fine. So what I'm trying to decide is where do I want it? Let's put it like right here. Okay, so we have our Let's Be Friends and our Happy Birthday. And then for our alternate card, we're gonna use the uh, basic white note cards and envelopes. So, of course, you can just, you know, trim your uh, cards down, but this is just to have alternate ideas for the kit. If you're extending the life of your kit, if you're making more things with it. Um, so if you do basic white note cards and envelopes, you get 20 to a pack. They're already pre-cut and scored for you. Um, the regular size card will not fit in a mini paper pumpkin box. <clears throat> Here we go. So you can see it's very faint on here, um, the score line. So if you wanna reinforce your score line with your um, paper trimmer, you can do that. I'm just gonna kind of wiggle it back and forth and get my bone folder. Okay. All right, now we're gonna do the same exact pattern as we did on our paper pumpkin box. We're gonna do the same exact pattern around the border of our card. And let me just show you the card one more time. And again, I use stitched rectangles for this, but you can cut your regular rectangles too, whatever works for you, okay? And I'm gonna get my two gears. Get in gear. And we're just gonna start stamping in those corners. That's kind of where I always start. to see if I can get a measurement on this and then we'll just make it a little bit easier on ourselves. How about that? So it looks like this stitch rectangle is one and three quarters by three and one eighth. All right, so let's just trim this down real quick. because we're gonna do the Knight of Navy sentiment here. Okay, so we pop on our googly eyes. Let's go ahead and get this piece down. I'm tempted to do a Knight of Navy layer. Um, I think that'd be really cute with this card, but it's okay. And you know what would be perfect? The gears on the inside of the envelope. Should have done that. That would have looked great. Okay, so we're just gonna put this piece down so this is a good way with your alternate projects to still maximize as much as you can of the card bases that you cut up. Try to put your glue on before you put your googly eyes on. Okay, and then there we go. This one, should I pop that up on dimensionals? I think that would be cute. Let's do dimensionals for this happy birthday. I can find them 
I think I can close these up now. Here I go, doing it again. Here they are. Okay. So let me just, these seem to be sticking a little. I'm gonna do three on this one. It's a little bit longer. All right. The thing that's really nice about the spacing on this is that that is a perfect lineup. So that one and three quarters by three and one eighths with this bubble for the happy birthday, I'm loving that. I think that looks really cute. Okay, oh, Karen, thank you so much for checking. Karen put the number for the mini paper pumpkin boxes up in the comments. Um, it's item number 153069. Thank you so much for checking that. I really appreciate it. Um, if you get a chance to get those, like I said, they are retiring, but they're really great for kits, kits especially. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why I gravitate towards those because, you know, anybody who loves Paper Pumpkin or the kits collection just naturally gravitates towards the mini boxes too. Okay, so um, this is the pre-recorded section of the video. Um, the rest of the video is my live replay from Sunday. Uh, so here, this is the section that I knew was going to be a little more time consuming. And I'll just go ahead and say right out of the gate, for anybody who likes to make um, educational projects or anything like that for kids, um, they're very easy to do, but there's a lot of repetition and that means that there's more time investment involved when you're making something like this. But just know um, once you do create something like this and you laminate it like we will be doing with these cards here, uh, they can use them again and again and again. So it is worth the time investment if you have the time to make a project like this um, for your loved ones. So this kit was just too cute not to make something like this with these little flashcards. Um, it's our little memory game or our little matching game, just depending on you know what you prefer. So let me talk about the measurements first. We're working with two different size robots, and I always recommend measuring the size of the stamp so that you know that your card is going to be the right size and that you won't you know run into problems when you're stamping. So for our smaller card and our smaller robot, we're going to be dealing with a measurement of two and three quarters by two and a half. Um, we're going to be using the Detail Trio Punch, which is retiring. Uh, I am so sad about this punch being retired. You can see it right here. And this is how we round the corners on all of our little cards here. Okay. I'm also using the basic white thick cardstock for this. I had a lot of scrap paper left over um, that I thought it would be perfect to use up on something like this. So if you have a lot of scraps in your basic white or your basic white thick cardstock, a project like this is going to be absolutely perfect. So what I'm doing is I'm picking up the stamp with my Stamparatus plate. This is a stamp positioning tool if you're not familiar. I'm grabbing the head of the um, robot with the other side of my plate. And this is how I position. And then we just literally stamp and repeat again and again. So if you're new to my channel, um, you may not have seen this before, but if you are a returning um, viewer or subscriber, then you see me use this all the time. I think a stamp positioning tool makes uh, you know projects like this so much easier to do. So I do recommend you using a stamp cleaner of some kind, a quick cleaner, if you're gonna do a project like this in multiple colors like we are here. I use the Simply Chamois, um, and that works perfectly so that I can switch in between my stamp colors, and you can do this all in one sitting. I also took a pen and I marked the corners so that I would always be able to reposition um, each card in the same place because we really want our cards to be as uniform as possible for the kids. 
um, so that when they're doing their little matching or, or memory game that, you know, they look the same, that they have the same color, that they have the same positioning, that they are the same type of robot. Um, and that will make the game a little bit easier. So I'm just using the magnets um, that come with my Stamparatus to hold down the paper. And you can see me, sometimes I'm stamping once and sometimes I'm stamping twice. And that is just so that I get a nice bold color on these cards because they're gonna be laminated and hopefully they're gonna be around for a long time. So <clears throat> uh, if you are not familiar with a stamp positioning tool, if you uh, feel like you're an imperfect stamper, uh, maybe you don't get it right on the first pass or you don't get a clean stamp the first time around, the Stamparatus will allow you to stamp as many times as you need to to get it just exactly perfect and just exactly the color that you want. Um, so let's talk about colors. I'm using the coordinating colors from the kit um, that the Stampin' Up! team you know, chose. So we're working with Granny Apple Green, Balmy Blue, Knight of Navy, uh, pumpkin Pie, Bermuda Bay. Those are the color of all of our robots. I wanted to add a gray robot, so I added in gray granite as well. Totally optional. You don't have to do that. Gray granite was the only color that was not already part of the kit. Uh, another color that I think would have been absolutely perfect would have been Pacific Point. I thought about using that, um, but I did use that for an earlier project this month. So uh, as part of Autism Awareness Month, in addition to showing you what our card kits can do, I also want to show you the activities that you can create. This isn't something that I do all the time, um, but because April is Autism Awareness Month, I did make a decision to really focus heavily um, on, you know, alternative projects and things like that this month. Okay, so here we are getting into that larger card size because we're gonna start stamping with that larger robot. And we're basically repeating the process of placing our stamp down, marking the corner so that I know where to put every card, right? These are all the same size card. We're just gonna be stamping in repeat. So um, just marking those corners on that piece of scrap paper is such a huge help. And then once I get everything positioned where I want it, um, I will go ahead and put that down. So I decided to stamp the body first and then position the head so that I felt like I had a better um, grip on its placement if you're doing uh, two-step stamping like this. And with Balmy Blue, it definitely needed to be re-inked, so I decided to stamp that multiple times. Um, and I really liked the way that it turned out. So um, Knight of Navy, wow, I, I was surprised how dark I was able to get that. Um, by stamping it two times on these cards. And it is just such a perfect, crisp color and image. Was so, so happy with that. <clears throat> and Granny Apple Green, you get a nice um, darker green tone whenever you stamp that more than once as well. So it's um, always fun to work with the Stamparatus and you know see how you can uh, layer the color onto these images. Um, I don't always do that, so it's fun when you get that opportunity. So here you just see me cleaning with the Simply Chamois in between my colors. Um, and, you know, use whatever stamp cleaner works for you, just as long as it's something that works quickly, right? So um, you can let me know in the comments um, if you are enjoying seeing these alternate projects. Um, I got so much feedback on a recent Paper Pumpkin video, and I was so grateful to everybody who left me a comment saying that with unboxings, you prefer to do those separate to the alternate projects. Um, for this particular video, since it's a slightly different kit, it's not Paper Pumpkin, it's for kids, um, I wanted to walk through it all in a single video. So, um, but you know, let me know. I've also gotten some feedback on the sped up sections of my videos. Um, people were feeling like they were sped up a little too fast. So I've slowed it down and hopefully this is a better pace um, so that you guys can still very clearly see what I'm doing, even though I have sped up portions of the video. Um, I absolutely love doing alternative projects and ideas, and I do like to show uh, what works for us um, with my son at home with our crafts um, from time to time. So um, I actually have a special guest who's going to be coming onto my channel and talking um, in a little bit more detail about how you can work with uh, kids on the spectrum whenever you're doing crafting activities. And we are gonna be focusing on this robot, but this robot 
<clears throat> we are going to be focusing on this Robot Buddies card kit. Um, so I'm excited to share that. I'll be sharing that on the channel here soon, definitely before the end of April. Uh, because of course, once we get into May, we are going to be full swing into our new catalog. The new annual catalog from Stampin' Up! is going to launch on May 3rd, 2022. Now, I have a ton of information in the description box right underneath this video right here on YouTube um, as to how you can reach out to me, um, where you can find me and my information on my blog. Uh, if you are interested in receiving a catalog from me and you do not already have a demonstrator, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to send you a catalog. Um, if you've placed an order with me in the last 12 months, you will automatically get a catalog unless you reach out to me and tell me that you don't need one. Um, so you can do that too. If you are not already on my email list, please, 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 I recommend you get onto that email list because it is the first place that I share information, projects, um, you know, new launches. If I'm doing classes or events like this in color club, I'm going to be hosting this year. So, um, be sure to get onto my email list. I have a link in the description below. <clears throat> now here, um, I have to tell you, this was such, a, <laughs> this was such a relaxing process for me where I was rounding all of these corners. I am so sad that this punch is retiring. It is still available, um, but these are only while supplies last. So once they are gone, they are gone. Uh, if you want this, and I love it so much, I recommend it. Uh, be sure to get it and add it to your collection uh, before it is gone. Uh, same with the mini paper pumpkin boxes. So uh, rounding the corners on these cards is totally optional. It was just something that I decided to do. Um, but you can leave, you know, you can leave the corners there if you feel like this is a little too time consuming. Uh, for me, it was totally worth it. Now, I, of course, am going to be laminating um, these cards. So a laminator, of course, is um, not a product that Stampin' Up! sells. And I don't typically show products um, unless there's a special exception. Uh, and a laminator is one of those because with Autism Awareness Month, sometimes you need more reinforcement um, with your projects, with your crafts. And that is definitely the case um, with my son. He loves to rip and tear and bend. So the laminator really helps give us the support that we need so that these can, you know, be used again and again. So my laminator is from Scotch um, and I am just turning it on. And whenever you um, use a laminator, you need to give it a few minutes to heat up. So I'm gonna wait for that blue indicator light to come on. There are two heat settings um, that you can choose from. I always do the lower setting. Um, I also use the Scotch laminator sheets in eight and a half by 11 because that's the size that my laminator takes. Um, but I know that there are larger ones out there, you know, 12 by 12 and all of that. So regardless, you know, whatever laminator that you have, I'm sure is totally fine. I did use the thicker cardstock for these. So if you would want to bump it up to the higher heat setting, you could do that. I still, I thought it was fine. Um, so it's totally up to you. So what I'm doing, whenever I'm arranging my projects in a laminator sheet, I like to make sure that I have even spacing as best as I can. So that when I go to cut these up, I can use my paper trimmer to kind of cut around first before I go in and do the more detailed cutting around the edges. Now, normally you could stop right with the paper trimmer um, and don't have to do that little extra cutting. But today I did decide to round the corners of each of my cards, even with the laminating material on there. So um, I went back in with my uh, paper snip scissors and just kind of rounded those corners with the laminator sheets. And you'll see me doing that here in a minute. But first, we're running these through. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say, follow the manufacturer's instructions for whatever laminator that you have. Never leave it under unattended. You know, go with all the safety guidelines. Whenever the laminator first comes out, um, the sheet, once it's been laminated, just give it a second to cool before you start handling it. Um, I don't recommend doing this part with kids unless you feel they are old enough or... Uh, mature enough to understand the heat settings and to be safe with that. Um, I do the laminating and then, you know, my son will play with the pieces once they've all been laminated and taken care of. Um, always make sure you turn off your laminator and unplug it. Just all of those, you know, recommended guideline things um, whenever you're working <clears throat> with some type of a heat tool, right? 
Um, so definitely follow the manufacturer settings just depending on what machine you use. Uh, with the paper trimmer, it's so easy. It cuts like butter right through these pieces. Um, so that's always a nice perk. And then this way, um, you have enough space to trim around um, each of your pieces without having to worry about cutting into the other card, right? So um, just making sure how you do your layout with your laminator sheets makes such a difference. Um, if you put them too close together, they'll be hard to cut. Okay, so one thing I haven't talked about with this kit, the Robot Buddies kit, is how affordable it is. So the kits collection, um, they are specifically designed to be all-inclusive, meaning everything that you need is right inside the box. If you're familiar with Paper Pumpkin, our kits collection is very, very similar. Um, this kit actually has a block in here whenever you purchase it. Uh, so you have a block to go right with your stamps if you've never stamped before or if the kids you're stamping with have never stamped before. It makes it nice and easy. Um, the price points on these are really affordable. They're really low. So you could buy one, two, three, four kits, um, what, you know, whatever would work for you. You can find um, the whole kits collection series, which is more than just Robot Buddies, um, by going to, you know, stampinup.com. You can go and check out the kits collection. I also wanted to talk about our pre-order phase. So for demonstrators, you can actually pre-order brand new products now, including the new in color collection. So if you are interested in getting a starter kit, I highly recommend checking that out. I believe you can put kits collection items into a starter kit as well. So the way a starter kit would work is you choose $125 worth of product. That means you customize your kit, but you only pay $99 and you get free shipping. You can choose brand new pre-order items as part of your starter kit. You do not have to wait. Customers have to wait until May 3rd. Demonstrators get immediate access. So when you would sign up, you would get immediate access to those pre-order items. And you would also get access to being able to see the catalog before anybody else. Um, so that's really great. Demonstrators are not able to show um, the inside of a brand new catalog until it launches worldwide, which is on May 3rd. So this is a great way to get that insider look. Um, you get a discount on your kit and you get some, you know, $26 in value um, of free product in your in your starter kit. And you also get 20% off all of your purchases as a demonstrator. You do not have to sell. Um, it's entirely up to you. But this is a great way to get in on those brand new items. And I have a link um, to the starter kit in the description box below if you're interested in getting started with that. So we have our Let's Be Friends box. We have our Happy Birthday box. Okay, and then we have those original cards from the paper, well, I don't wanna say paper pumpkin, but from the um, Stampin' Up! Kids Collection team. Um, so, so cute. What did I do with the rest of the cards? Did I drop them? Yes, I did. Here they are. Okay, that's what I dropped earlier. Okay, so this was one of the original cards here. So just slightly larger in size, right? But so cute, just depending on which way you wanna do that. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this today. Hopefully I'll get all caught up with all of our new catalog pre-order fun stuff and everything like that uh, now that I'm feeling a little bit better and we're going to, you know, get back on the horse, right? So thank you all so much for your patience um, while I was off and I will be making it up to you over the next couple of weeks. So thanks so much and I will see you guys again on Sunday. This is Sunday. I will see you guys again on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. All right. Bye-bye, everybody.